Hello, it's the Holistic Travel Nurse Naomi. In this episode, I have Julie Reynolds on. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her background. She has been a nurse since the 1990s. Um, she currently practices at Vanderbilt um, Medical Center in the research and aromatherapy um, department. She has a background working in burn ICU, PACU. You even did pediatrics, um, so God bless you for the pediatrics. And then you are um, a you have a professional certification aromatherapist. Um, you are working on a book. I can't wait to read your book. I will definitely support you and buy your book. And National Wellness, you've been in the National Wellness Magazine as an author and publisher. That's really cool. Um, American Nurse Journal and Perry um, Anesthesiologist Nursing, which is really cool. And then are you the one who started the Essential Oil Nursing Conference or are you just one of the co-hosts? Uh, no, I started that with, uh, yeah, with my business partner, Kathy Randall. Oh. We have a huge thank you for that because um, I, I listened to it the not this past year, but the year before last year, I got to be there. And I think it's an incredible way to support um, us nurses and what we do and coming together. I, I loved it. I think you guys did a really fabulous job um, and different speakers that you had and different topics. It was really great. So I recommend anybody who is a nurse and does essential oils needs to be at the nursing conference, the essential nursing conference. Absolutely, hands down, needs to go. So big support. I made tons of friends. Um, I have lots of now other nurses from that conference that I got to know, just who was sitting down at the table with, and that are going to be on this podcast, actually. Awesome. So yeah. I know it was really awesome. And it was really awesome. There was really, really good, um, a lot of science, a lot of smart people. So it was really cool. And I'm really excited to have you on. I'm really excited to um, hear your story. What kind of, um, first, what got you into nursing? Uh, oh, goodness. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. This is, it's, it's an honor. And um, I've listened to your podcast and I love what you do. Um, and the conference actually started so that we could collaborate more. So I was really excited to hear that you've gotten a chance to collaborate uh, more with your nurse colleagues. And um, yeah, so I was, it was in a time I just spoke at one of um, the com larger conventions and I kept hearing from nurses who wanted to in integrate essential oils into their practice. And mm -hmm. um, so I just really thought we need a time when we can get together and collaborate. So that's exciting. So what took me into nursing? Goodness. Um, well, I... <laughs> I think just as a kid, I always knew that I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to make an impact. And I knew that I wanted to like had all these um, imagined like what I could do that would be really great. Right. So the people I knew did, you know, wrote books and um, sung and traveled the world. And none of that seemed like it was in my reach. So I, in um, actually my mom said, well, why don't you go be a nurse? And I said, <laughs> out of no other options that I could think of, I said, okay. So, so that was, I did not grow up thinking I was going to be a nurse, but it seemed like at the time that it was a really good outlet for what I wanted to do with my life and just helping people live well and, um, and making a difference in people's lives. So I just kind of walked forward into it. And, um, I didn't mention that <laughs> I, I was kind of all over the place and you can tell that by my bio. <laughs> in the yeah. burning unit, in the surgical unit in peds. I didn't even mention that I did hair restoration for a while. <laughs> so, wow. Um, so I've been all over the place, just finding my place. And it honestly, um, been through a lot with that. And I feel like after 30 years of practicing, well, it, it's been five years since I really discovered natural solutions. Um, but it took me that long to really find, um, I think what I was really looking for in nursing, that fulfillment and that real ability to help people live well and um, take control of their health. And yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so. So you yeah. got introduced to oils and it kind of opened up your mind to all the natural stuff. Who introduced you? Yeah, I actually, um, I, I work at Vanderbilt and I, they had a symposium for healthcare um, professionals 
I'm all about the science of essential oils. And so I went, it was like an eight hour chemistry class. You and I were talking earlier about chemistry <laughs> and I totally wish that I would have paid more attention to organic chemistry during nursing school, during that, that symposium, because I heard words that I, I was writing notes and I didn't know if I was spelling it correctly, but I heard the words like sesquiterpenes <laughs> and I had no idea. I don't even know if, how I spelled it. I wrote it several times because I thought, well, if I, one of these alternate spell spellings is going to be something I can look up later. Um, so I had no idea, um, but I knew that as they applied the oils and as they talked about the impact of these chemical compounds, um, in all of the strain lang language that I was going to go home and look up, I knew that there was something really significant for healthcare there. Um, so after that, I just kind of kept my eyes open and I looked, I didn't learn then how to use essential oils. Um, I had a nurse friend who had um, given me oils to when I had pneumonia and I went through pneumonia just on oils and I was, I didn't know what they were. She gave me capsules, <laughs> I should say. And I was like, I don't know what just happened. I did, never asked. She never told me. And, um, and then um, it really wasn't. So I, I researched and I studied. I did not know how to apply it. Um, and then I had a friend, another nurse who I um, was experiencing some head tension. And she gave me a, a bottle of this oil, had me put a couple drops on. 20 minutes later, I was just thinking, how in the world did we miss this in the medical community? How did I not hear about this before? Yeah. That my head tension never goes away like this. And it, I was comfortable again and it worked and it worked fast. Um, and I just, from then on, I was like, why wouldn't I share this? This has got to, this has got to come into my nursing practice. So it's kind of no turning back after that. <laughs> so which yeah, is strange because I'm like all the science that I had ingested, I, I guess, and um, all the research. And there's a lot of science out there to support um, essential oils and their effectiveness. And it wasn't oh gosh, really yes. that that convinced me. It was the experience. So, yeah, sometimes we have to take the science part off and just, you know, put them on us or bring them in to really go, what? But as you research, like I'm working on my advanced aromatherapy, like I told you, and it's there it's it's very scientific and there there's a ton of articles there's a ton of um studies and i hope there's even more there's even more coming up um yeah i, I think we've just scratched a lot the surface more, by we'll see in the future. and i know we will because yeah. i think we're seeing a shift in our healthcare system because it's so broke um that people don't want to be on pharmaceuticals for our life and they are looking at eating better as some of my massive books on health is and taking care of the health because I realized that that's going to be the cheaper route in their healthcare system. Um, especially our millennials are really into this. I mean, the, the growing popularity or you're like, people argue vegan, keto, whatever. We're, we're getting into it and we're going back to eating organic and eating healthier. And I know for a fact, eating healthier has affected my health. So a diet is a huge key to our health, but adding in something natural. Um, and then as a, a nurse, we feel empowered now that we have things that we can really help our patients and the population. And we are educators <clears throat> and people forget that we are educators. We educate our patients and we educate other people. Um, from medication safety to now we need to go step back to essential oil safety too, as you know, you, you are, you have aromatherapy certification. So we edu we are educators and you're an educator because you've spoke and educated and you're educating other nurses, which is fabulously, I, I hope to see more of this. I hope to see more and more um, integration too within a healthcare system. Absolutely. I think nurses are positioned perfectly because we, we don't, we are autonomous. I think we forget that sometimes uh, we're completely autonomous, um, even though sometimes our, the structure or the perceived hierarchy within our organizations don't communicate that well. Um, it doesn't seem like it's set up that way. And I think we forget sometimes um, that autonomy we have and we aren't, um, we have, 
nursing in theory is more holistic. Mm -hmm. um, we struggle with that because the medical system that we are trying to survive in um, doesn't mm -hmm. allow the time to sometimes implement or to even think about some of those holistic um, those other modalities for healing. But the nice thing is, is that now that Joint Commission is wanting non-pharmacological options for pain management, um, they are, we've got the ANA who is standing by the precautionary principles, which means that we don't need those random control trials to prove that something that we have known for centuries work. Um, there are a lot of things that as nurses, we can embrace that and we can be the educators. We can be the people who take the professionals that were with the patients so we can find out what their preferences are. Because honestly, a lot of them are coming. I mean, who doesn't know or hasn't been someone who's come to the healthcare system looking for answers and maybe can't find it? You get an opinion um, mm -hmm. and maybe not anything that's that's just black and white, here's what's wrong with you and here's what we're going to do. And then worse is that when we do have answers, not even when we don't have answers, but when we do have answers and they come with a lot of side effects and yep. uh, leave us with, they're focused on symptom management. So they leave yep. us with a lot of long-term consequences. And as nurses, we can, I mean, I dream of the day when a nurse, instead of um, sedating a patient can offer lavender um, to calm the anxious feelings, to yeah. offer ginger and marjoram for discomfort and to ease nausea. Um, our patients are, are dealing with a lot of anxiousness and mm -hmm. um, they have difficulty mm -hmm. sleeping. So there's a lot of things that play into, as we know, that holistic purpose, uh, that mm -hmm. holistic person that we're taking care of, where maybe if some of our colleagues are only dealing with a certain aspect of their health, we're dealing with the whole person. And I think that's positions us perfectly to introduce some of these and to fully integrate, um, not just because they smell good or they might relax someone. I think we can make a real difference with um, just knowing our chemistry, <laughs> mm -hmm. tracking that, getting a hold of it, pulling in that evidence and even creating evidence with research. And that's what I hope to do with bringing nurses together too, to collaborate because I mean, we were even talking before, you have a specialty that I've mm -hmm. never experienced. And so you see a different patient population. Mm -hmm. So we can learn a lot from each other on how to support the general population. So I'm so excited about where nurses are and what we can do with essential oils to fully integrate them into the healthcare system and just make healthcare better for everyone. I agree. And I have to just speak about the little conferences one. I think it's really great that getting a whole bunch of nurses together like that, because we can support each one of us autonomy in whatever specialty they are at. Um, I know a nurse that wants our podcast and I want to reach her out to you and I want her to be part of our community and our Facebook group because she's a school nurse and she wants to do more, um, in school and wants to see more with the children in school and she needs support of we need support of each other to go okay yes we we have a voice we want to make change there's science behind what we're saying um so you know working now is together and and you know what I'm, you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and support the support yeah, and so that, and that's also, I mean, there are a lot of nurses that are also starting their own businesses and they're doing <laughs> consulting. And um, I yep. mean, nurse, nursing is so diverse. There's, you know, yep. all the populations and we're out in the community. And uh -huh. so it's not, I think that my passion for having it fully integrated into healthcare is just to expand that reach and, and bring it into mainstream. There's so many things, like even just, I sometimes say that my side gig, um, what I do outside of the hospital, I almost feel more like a nurse because I have that autonomy and the mastery and purpose that go make that very fulfilling to meet with people and help them find those natural solutions and just really yep. be able to listen to the person and to uh -huh. dig into what their health goals are and, and empower them. And nurses and all, and like, I love that when we get to work with school nurses and um, I talked to a nurse that um, is doing prison nursing, that's wow. not, I mean, it just doesn't, the, the possibilities are limitless. And that's so exciting to me, um, the impact that we can have as nurses, just bring yes. what we know and, and get in front of some of the hearsay um, and the fear that comes um, 
with the use of essential oils and yep. aromatherapy and just telling the truth about what we know and what we don't know. Um, so I think it's just as important to acknowledge the limitations, but honestly, essential oils have been around for centuries and the numbers don't lie. So, well, it, and we have to go back to, it. it's not a comparison, but everybody has done is chemistry all differently. And we all deal with food differently. We all deal with water and oxygen the same, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but we deal with food, which is a chemical. There's a little broken down all these chemicals. We deal with those um, individually differently, um, your body chemistry and your microbes in your gut are very different than mine. Right. And so when we're dealing with uh, essential oils um, and a person, they're, it's also different for them. Um, and so each, it's, it's very individualized. And, and that's the, the, the beauty of it though, too. And, but the, I think the beauty of it is that the, for one particular essential oil, we have a wide variety of chemical constituents in that oil and right. so that's what's the really vast beauty part of it is that if you like i've been studying and you see like um one particular chemical constituent in oil and there are studies on that sorry siri thinks i'm talking to her um <laughs> and so it, but you see one part and they've tried to take that out in science i mean that's where medications came from is in nature anyways or old drugs from pharmaceutical would take one chemical constituent of a plant and make a synthetic form our bodies though are very intelligent that know the difference and they respond differently and actually respond better to something in nature than something man-made that's right right and i think um, too that's another i guess case for nurses is that we look at those things we aren't a one size fits all we didn't learn that way we didn't train that way our nursing theory doesn't it embraces that whole that whole person and the diversity that we have and um so yeah absolutely um I think that's also why I feel so strongly that nurses are just perfectly positioned for this um and once we educate our colleagues, um, I think that they'll be able to appreciate that too. It's just, we need to step up. I agree. I do. I think we should agree um, on stepping up. I happen to say, I happen to see you. We were in a few Facebook groups together and I saw a post. And so I have to put this out there because this, I think our listeners would like it, but you talked about a recipe for eyelashes since women and their beauty is huge. <laughs> Was it you that talked about eyelashes and M? growing your eyelashes or making them thicker naturally? Um, I did post that well, quite a while ago when I was trying uh. to, um, quite honestly, I tried one of the, another product um, for mm -hmm. my lashes because I just kept seeing all everybody with these beautiful lashes. Um, I felt like I didn't want to put those toxins near my eyes. So then I found this recipe with a lavender and um, rosemary. Um, and, and honestly, the person who I obtained the other product from was really pretty impressed with how long I maintained my, my eyelashes. It was messy though, to be quite honest. But I mean, that's the thing about essential oils is you could try new things and with it, you know, you just don't go crazy with it and follow basic parameters, but even beauty for beauty for skin, you know, there's just so much that is- Did it work? Um, Did it work? It, you know, I don't know that it grew my lashes, but it did hold them. It kept them from breaking off. Like I was told that when I stopped using this product that eventually the tips of my eyelashes would break off and they didn't as long as I used that. So as long as I used that at night, um, like anything, I did it consistently for a while and then kind of stopped because it was kind of messy, but it did work. Yeah. <laughs> so very, I mean, it's a tip. I've put in lavender um, in my mascara, but I'm not one to put some mascara on every single day too. It's a lot. I'm just getting older and I'm like, oh, it's so much work to put makeup yeah. on. <laughs> mascara and lipstick. That's the only thing I actually do use. So, so I'm never, that's, um, if we could come up with a totally natural mascara that I could be confident with. And that was what I was hoping for is if I had longer lashes, then maybe I could wean off the mascara. Anyway, so. <laughs> hey, it's it's worth trying. I've um I've played around with my oils and um and not the great places and 
Um, obviously we want to, you know, always toil people oil safety that we keep them. We are very cautious with the eyes. And yeah. so there, we have to be very cautious with your eyes and putting oils around your eyes. Um, you know, and uh, there are some that I put around my eyes every day, like frankincense, you know, is super nice and gentle, diluted. A yarrow palm is nice. Spike nard's nice. Um, but then, you know, I don't go be throwing peppermint around my eye. You're, it's a torture device. I thought this could <laughs> yeah. really torture people, you know, um, or, yeah, but everybody has to have that experience sometime, not intentionally, but right. <laughs> <laughs> they survive they don't go to the er though <laughs> it's like a rite of passage um yeah it's an essential oil passage though, as far as eye health i mean this is also something i mean very anecdotal i i i, I had um my mother-in-law was using immortel around her eyes to reduce the appearance of um, wrinkles and um and actually ended up getting removed from one of her eye drops that reduced pressure so that was Ooh. kind of interesting. So, and she probably um, has prettier skin, <laughs> so, prettier skin, and uh, less expense in those eye drops. <laughs> so, yes, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the cool thing is that the chemical constituents um, in a very good oil are going to do multiple things. You might use it for one thing, but you're going to get the benefit. Um, some days I um, will have a little bit. You know, I have some issues and I will have, I will be the walking diffuser. So you could just smell me coming. Yeah. And, but that's how I would choose to handle my issues. Um, and I don't, and, and my dogs who are now calm because I just put calm on them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the calmer yeah. on animals is wonderful. So nice and mellow. Um, so that's really, really neat. And I think that the supporting of us to one another, you know, with them. Um, so it, any oil, other protocols that you love that you do daily? Um, oh, well, my, my daily routine is pretty, I mean, I, I'll, every day I'm kind of selecting, I love, like right now I love Jasmine. I accidentally, I just put together a blend of black pepper and ylang ylang that I'm really loving in my diffuser right now. Um, but I think again, my, my go-to for head tension for, is something that I carry with me all the time because I run into people all the time that need it. And, um, and that's the frankincense, um, lavender and, uh, and peppermint. Hmm. Those, um, those together have been, a, a game changer for me. So, and so that's funny that it, that, that's the, it, this is the way it goes. That's what works for you. But for me, I like Copaiba and um, Aroma Touch. So it's yeah, unique. Yeah, Aroma Touch the, and just anything. Marjoram is actually one of my favorite oils in general. And since Aroma Touch also has the marjoram, I love <laughs> I love that too. So I could go either way, but I would say I would see that I see the most um, most receptivity and the most effectiveness from that blend when I share it with other people. So that's one I wouldn't ever leave the house without because it gives me an opportunity to help someone else experience that same um, wow moment that I had. Um, but yeah, I love Aroma Touch. Um, like I said, marjoram is one of my favorite. It's actually going to be one of the four oils that we chose for our protocols at, um, at the hospital too. So it's gentle and it's so diverse. So I know it, yeah. it's unique. So there are, you guys have, is Vanderbilt have diffusers all over or in certain areas? Um, it's an opt in basis. So there are, um, I think 10 clinics and three units that, um, that do diffuse, um, for workplace wellness. That's, um, it kind of falls into that category and it's only citrus oils. Um, so mostly it's diffusing at the nurse's station, um, in palliative care, they did a blend. Um, they used a, a blend there instead of the citrus oils because it was an all night thing. But um, we're working on um, moving up our algorithms and our protocols for um, the, the patient care use. Um, so I'm really excited about oh, that. That is so. really exciting, you know? Yeah, so we and just chose four oils and we're working out all the details, but um so we'll start with just those four oils and um, we're doing lavender ginger marjoram and um green mandarin oh, i lo love that green mandarin 
Yeah. I yeah. love the smell of it and actually it tastes yummy. Yeah. So they're all very um, mild and they're all very diverse. So a lot of things that you can do with those four oils and there aren't any known contraindications, no, nothing out there that says you shouldn't use them. So. Absolutely. I just gave someone else a protocol that kind of gave to me that I kind of read about in one of these other books too, that I had on for kidney support, since that's my specialty. And that protocol actually is juniper, you know, oh, juniper yeah. is so supportive for the kidneys and the new celery seed is super supportive for our kidneys. And then um, the green mandarin and lemon. I need to use that, that celery seed more. I got uh, so many so many new protocols going, and celery seeds kind of falling off, falling off. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a note. Yeah, it's very like, unique. Yeah. Very unique. Um, and uh, what they do chemistry wise, it was, it's funny because doTERRA would put it out, but then I was reading about it in an herb book about celery seed. And so it was really excited because I already knew some of the chemical parts of it in one of my herb books as an herb and you get the better benefit as the oil than the herb. So I was very excited about that. Yeah. Um, I, had it, you... I had it kind of worked into my routine for like a week or two and then I just stopped, but it's so much easier than juicing. Definitely much easier than eating celery. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm doing keto. Um, I've been living keto actually in very low carb. And so, but so I eat celery because it's pretty low carb though. But I have juiced and I have juicers and it's so much work to juice. Yeah. Um, and doing juice cleanses. And I really believe in it. There's a time and a place to do juice cleansing. I think it's um that's something we don't talk about in um detoxing is so important for our body to help us out because we are bombarded with too many toxins and we need to aid our liver. We need to aid our um, kidneys and supporting them um, in removing just whatever environmental toxins we're taking in that we don't even know. Um, so, I mean, it's very, you know, very, those are very, very helpful things. And I love the celery seed for it besides juicing. It's just, it's cheaper to actually give juice yourself. And now that it's winter, it's harder to do, but, yeah. um, and then I've now that I've gone completely low carb. So, um, it's, it's cool to have the, the, and it's rice to have those flavors in my water and stuff like that, because it's when I'm not, I don't do any sugar. I don't do, um, artificial sweeteners. So I love my oils in my water you know, and, or flavorful and something that I'm cooking. So my lemon, my lime, my, I'm looking forward to this white grapefruit that's going to come here in November. Oh, I know. Um, this might yeah. be the, <laughs> so I'm excited, you know, about these, um, citrus oils and I was reading about them and, and that they're in a similar chemistry in all of them. And, um, and I was just educating and just want to put this out there to someone who's new all to oils that your citrus oils are all of them. So best for a few are photosensitivity. And maybe you can talk on that too. What does that mean in the photosensitivity? Julie? You know oh, with the citrus oils? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, basically that means you know, we have to be really careful about um, exposing our skin to the sun, applying an oil and then going out into the sun. So I think what we, we say 24 hours is the most cautious um, recommendation to, uh, and you don't need probably even, you need to be really careful about applying the oils to your skin and then going out into the sun is basically what that means. So, um, it means don't put lemon on your on your face and then go about your day. <laughs> Not don't good. do it. No, I don't think citrus oils are the best actually on your skin, anyways, unless they're on the bottom of your feet. They're very so. much like when you read though, they'll say you know like lemon is an astringent and it's really um, it, a lot of times it's recommended to add to your facial routine, which I think is just. I don't usually make that recommendation, but I see it in a lot of um, the books and a lot of on websites and things. Um, because it probably is, it's a good cleanser, um, but you'd want to use it at nighttime um, as part and dilute it down too. So mm -hmm. there oil. probably wouldn't be a reason why to put it on meat <laughs> and then go out and torture. 
Yeah. <laughs> Lots of other options too. So, and that's the thing about essential oils is there are always, even if you do, you, if you're uncertain about a precaution that you see somewhere, there's so many other options. We've listed, how many oils have we listed just in this conversation? Oh, so but many. you're not sure if this is recommended for that. There's so many other options. It's not a reason yep. to give up on essential oils. And I think I love that about meeting people and we were talking about everybody's a little different is mm -hmm. that, yeah, for head tension, for an, for anxious feelings, um, for anything that you're dealing with, there's just if this oil isn't it, or if you're a little, you know, hesitant to use this because of something that you've heard or something you've seen online, we'll choose another oil. Exactly. So, this yeah. is why you have to have more than one at home. I mean, you have to have a variety. You want a variety of things um, at home um, for when you possibly need them. Yeah. So, My dream is that in our healthcare system that, um, that one day um, people will have like their dentist and their chiropractor <laughs> <laughs> and their their primary care provider um, and their nurse aromatherapist to help <gasps> them bring it all together. So everybody will have a nurse aromatherapist on their, <laughs> their on their staff, and they can um, so that they can go. Okay, well this is, if this person said to do this and this person said to do that, help me sort it out. And you know, so that's my dream. Or I, a health a health coach. I mean, I think a health a good they, health coach. I would put those, yeah, I would put those two things together because I think that's what nurses are. They're health coaches. So that's what we are. I mean, yeah. um, we just, um, we can also put a lot of tubes and orifices in your body if you in the hospital. <laughs> so, yeah, can, but I don't think we want to like remind people that, <laughs> <laughs> that we can do all that. <laughs> I reminded my kids, I used to tell them, you know, you come see me, I can put a tube in every orifice of your body. Yeah, that's so. not an association. The only nurses appreciate that association. <laughs> I know that because I, being a surgical, being in the uh, periop <laughs> and starting IVs on everyone, you tell somebody they have beautiful veins, they don't really <laughs> think that's cool. <laughs> you're like, I, I can hit that vein from here. Yeah. You know, you're <laughs> back up instead of, uh, like, yeah, whatever. The I know. I know. <laughs> I have the same, I have the same thing with, um, you know, the years of different tubes and um, I was talking to someone the other day and uh, about, you know, put dropping an NG tube and this is a nasal gastric tube and I had a patient that pulled it out. I don't know how many times I was like begging the doctor. I'm like, your turn, gladoscope, you go put it down. <laughs> I was like, I just, I'm over this, putting yeah. this tube back down this patient. I was like, oh, for goodness sake, if you want this, this is, this is so much work. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then I've had, you know, I mean, that's the fun part of nursing and the not also fun part of nursing is that, you know, we, we, I have to put hats down to all the healthcare professionals and then nurses, um, nurses aides, um, to techs, all those people that hands on patients and that, um, really make the, um, a hospital experience or a, an experience when someone and your loved ones in the hospital, you know, they can really I had incredible nurses that have taken care of me or that have been there for patients um, or family members of mine that have just taken that time to spend with your, you know, your patient to educate them or do something, you know, loving and kind just to sit at their side of the bed and hold their hand and listen to them. So um, that's, that's what the profession of nursing is. It's a, we are there sometimes in your darkest hour and um, we're in and out of people's lives quite quickly. And, um, but you know, we, and we also, but we also have major sales cuts that we, we have your safety, your safety and your health at the topest priority of our day. So that's the uniqueness of our profession, which is beautiful. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to Nation. hear, and, and nurses. Uh, I think we need to give that, give that speech to ourselves, to each other, often. Yeah, yeah. I think that hopefully, if someone's listening or watching, it's in the healthcare profession, and they're feeling down and out. You know that they find support and love in what we're saying, and we should love on each other too, and um, support each other while 
How many times I go put oils on my coworkers? <laughs> right, <laughs> and, right. And, oh, um, rolly massages are like the best. Yeah, yeah. Shoulder <laughs> tension, be exactly. gone. Yeah, and then work more as a team, and that you know, um, hey, I'm we're there for each other, and um, we know that it's and it's also it's not the easiest profession. We know that the people take home so much baggage and things that they see. And, um, and we have to deal with, and we have to be best at, like, I love that you guys did a whole thing of being self-care and that nurses, we need to be, you know, make sure that we're taking care of ourselves really well and filling our cups up really well that it will overflow to other people. Right. And knowing that if, if you're doing something that you don't love in nursing, there's something else that you can gravitate towards. To me, like discovering natural solutions for me was the answer to, frustration that I was experiencing in nursing, mm -hmm. some of the, <clears throat> the loss of passion and that feeling of, you know, just wanting that autonomy and mastery and purpose that I was talking about. And it's not going to be ever, it's not going to be essential oils for every nurse. It's going to be something else, you know, maybe it's mindfulness and maybe it's yoga or maybe it's, there's so many things that as nurses we bring to the table. Um, it's just, and it's important for us to to look for those things that we love and can just bring that passion back into our professional life and do the things that you're saying to be there for people. Because I mean, they, they we see it all the time. You can't pour from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that means being fulfilled in what we do and finding our purpose and finding that passion and bringing that uh, because we all are made differently. Um, so or whatever that is, it's going to be different, look a little different for all of us. And I love that about nursing. Probably one of my, one of my favorite things about nursing, aside from being able to stick tubes in every orifice. <laughs> it's pretty close second. <laughs> oh, just someone telling you you're a really good stick. Hey, that only, that's only an acronym we hear in nursing. You're a really good stick. You know? <laughs> so there's just this, the whole acronyms of us that, you know, um, I, I had this little saying also, I told the kids that I could put a tube in every orifice, but I also said, <clears throat> you know, the little kid that said, I see naked people and I go, well, I see dead people. I've seen, not dead people. I've, um, that little kid that said, I said, I've seen dead people. I'm like, I've seen naked people, way too many naked people. And <laughs> you can't undo it, you know, you know, what do you, that's just us. You know, we see people in their most vulnerable state sometimes, um, people won't remember and I won't remember. I mean, if I've had a patient, my goodness, when I was thinking when I gave birth with one of my labors and I'm like, it was this nurse. It was awesome. But I'm like, gosh, darn it. She has to be so darn good looking. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Cause she was my focal point for like an hour and a half is like try to give birth and then screw everybody else. She was the one who kept me through that labor. And so hands down to you, LND nurses, and don't have to be so darn hot when you go to work, you know, because <laughs> you just make us feel like crap when we're being the patient <laughs> to have this really gorgeous nurse. So, you know, um, it, it's but, kind of interesting the things we go through with people and it just really, it's hard to, you can't convince them that it doesn't phase you. Like it's, not, it's not, we're not seeing the same thing they think we're seeing. So. Yeah. We have different, we yeah. have different. Videos. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I know. I've been at like Disney or different places in public, and I'm assessing people. But how, now I assess people and go, "Oh gosh, that person needs oils." Yeah. That's my new. <laughs> that's my new assessment. Well, that's a given. Like everybody needs oils. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I want to go put oils, and I'm like right then and there. I'm like, you need calming. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. thank you, Julie, for like um, being on the podcast and. Um, and I thank you for the, the nursing essential oil conference. Um, I really hope it just will grow and that we all support each other um, in our practices and that we support you guys as uh, patients or as users and trying to better your health, that we are here to help you and educate you and um, give you options. Awesome. Right. Thank, thank, yeah. And thank you for what you do. Yeah. Love it. It's great work. Yeah. I'm going to thank you for inviting me into it. I'm honored.
Oh, I'm excited to have you on. So let me hit stop. And then we're 